we're going to get started. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Brian Kelly, your monthly host of Ann Arbor New Tech. Uh, who's first timer tonight? Throw up a hand. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, we, uh, we've been running this meetup for quite some time. Um, it's actually been like uh, since 2009, so eight, eight years, which is crazy. I've only been living in Ann Arbor since 2012. Um, but since then, we've had 100 meetups, uh, over 300 companies have pitched, and there's over 6,000 members in this meetup group. So you're in, you're in good company. Um, uh, who right now is hiring at their company, if you're coming out here trying to hire? Who's looking for a job or a job change? Okay, so now you know, like, you can always, this is a good place to connect with those folks who are either hiring or looking to hire in town. Um, the reason this meetup started, uh, you know, like I said, predates my time here in Ann Arbor, was um, you know all the entrepreneurs, a bunch of people in town, like Doug Song, were saying, you know, this is great that we have this good entrepreneurial community here, but uh, it's not, and everyone like in the Midwest is always like super willing to put time in and meet with you, but you don't always know where to meet them. So uh, every month, uh, we like to have this this meetup as a place to at least know you'll see. A familiar face from before, maybe meet your next co-founder, and uh, also just to, um, uh, you know, if you do one thing tonight other than enjoy the pitches, make sure you you know shake the hand of one or two people, exchange a card, and they're likely here somewhere in Southeast Michigan. So um, you know, you never know who you'll meet. We have a mix of um, investors, uh, programmers. Start up curious people and like the thing I, I always want to like make really clear is just kind of like demystify what starting a business is all about because I think it feels intimidating often um, and this is a way that you get to see people at the very earliest stages sharing what they think about their business and you get to ask them questions. So thanks for coming out. Um, big thank you to a couple different groups: uh, the Entrepreneurship Clinic at the U of M Law School, Dana Thompson, uh, Dana, she's the one that gets at this great venue every month uh, so that you can we can all have somewhere good to convene. Um, Ann Arbor Geeks, A2 Geeks, which is a nonprofit dedicated to making Southeast Michigan, Ann Arbor, a great place for geeks and creatives to live, work, and play. Roger Rail, down here on the video, R2 Vive, Roger donates his time and many cameras every month to uh, send our uh, people pitching home with a video to show their friends and family. Um, we really appreciate that. And then uh, I'm one of many organizers that just volunteer our time to both curate the speakers every month and host. So uh, Doug, uh, Zach, Scott Goshi, uh, David Bloom, there's, there's a whole group of people who um, help make this happen. Pizza House afterward, for those of you who want to keep the conversation going, uh, Ann Arbor Spark has been uh, an awesome donor for free pizza for the last like five or six months. Um, if you don't know of them, uh, Ann Arbor Spark is committed to bringing together organizations and individuals to support the growth of companies and the creation of jobs in town. If you're a startup and you're looking for like office space and some basic like, investment just to like get your company registered and off the ground, um, it's super easy to do. Go find Spark Central downtown at Liberty and South Division and just walk in and say hello to somebody there. So our agenda this evening uh, will run till about 8 p.m. Um, we have five companies tonight. They each give a five-minute pitch, and then there's five minutes Q&A. Um, I'll call out people when you're asking a question, so just throw your hand up high. Uh, and just ask your question in the form of a question. Sometimes people like to share their advice and their you know, feedback about the business, and that's great, but it really works a lot better if you just ask guys a question, so I'd appreciate that. Um, and then uh, we'll make time for community announcements as well. So if you have a startup, if you're hiring, if you have another meetup that you want to plug here, everything is welcome. Uh, and we make plenty of time for that at the end. We uh, are always third Tuesday of each month. Uh, we are full in December. Actually, I just posted on the meetup group today. We have five new companies presenting next month. And I have two so far for January. So if you want to pitch in January or February, Email organizers at a2newtech.org. Uh, Brian's podcast recommendations. Uh, I, I Again, I, I don't think I'm listening to as much as I have in the past because my like, recommendations are the same. Uh, I, I have one new one. Jason Calacanis, an uh, angel investor. He wrote a book, so of course he had to put a podcast out. It's not bad. Uh, you can check it out. Jason Calacanis, <laughs> angel. 
Um, and ice is still, I'm like totally digging dissect. Anyone heard that one, dissect podcast? So it's like long form, uh, and di takes part albums. Um, this guy is he's just like total like music geek, both on like the music theory and the lyric side. He's currently doing Kanye West's uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, and it's totally awesome. Go, go check out the Dissect podcast and The Daily, of course. New York Times Daily is a great one. Uh, we have a Slack, madein82.com slash Slack, if you want to get into it. Uh, and with that, um, throw your phones on silent, and if you're going to tweet, use hashtag A2NewTech. Uh, and I'm pleased to welcome our first speaker this evening, uh, Pat Robin is going to tell us about Echolection. Echolection is a mobile app to find or create your favorite quotes, categorize them, and share them with your friends. He came up with this idea in undergrad in college, and then years later made it a reality. So let's all give Pat a warm up. Thank you, everyone. How's it going tonight? I uh, appreciate you having me, Brian. Thank you again. Um, so yeah, my, my partner and my co-founder, Chris Asmar, is unfortunately not able to be here tonight, but <laughs> We were roommates back in college, and we came up with this idea together our senior year back in, seems like a decade ago, forever ago, but it was only a few years ago. Um, effectively, our group of friends constantly is coming up with phrases, idioms, inside jokes, etc., that kind of define an era of our friendship, but also like uh, just kind of always become like points of reference throughout our relationship. So we basically made an app for that. Um, uh, so nearly everybody I know kind of has this this thing where they either they hear a song lyric or they read a passage from a book or you know somebody they know perhaps might say something incredibly profound or maybe it's something hilarious like you know my buddies and I say all the time so um, you know so a lot of people use like different uh, sources and, and methods to log these whether it's like a notepad a digital notepad a word sheet document or you know a, or a physical notepad um, and Effectively, our app is just kind of a, a digital platform for you to be able to both create custom quotes that you've come up with or maybe your peers, friends, family, what have you have said, um, but also it's a database for you to search for quotes and phrases via author and or category. So we have like thousands of authors kind of preloaded into our database as well as a, as, well as a few dozen pre-selected categories that you can kind of choose, choose and filter through, search through. Um, so each quote is an echo. Um, echo is just something that's re repeated verbatim. So once you kind of continue to add echoes into your profile, you grow your collection or your echo collection. Um, and again, like I said, it's also a social network, so you can tag your friends and family as the authors, or you can like, comment, share, et cetera, et cetera, back and forth. Um, so here you kind of have like the three steps you, that you go through to, to create an echo. You have your echo and your author that you put in, there's your two vital pieces of information. If you'd like to, you have the option to attach an image, or up to three images actually, and a location tag. And then the last step of creating an echo is where you choose where you save it. So you have kind of like your self-created library, which you call, which we're calling your echo collection. And you also have the, the option to, its, to make, make each echo private. Um, in addition to categorizing, you can also subcategorize. So you can do like TV shows and subcategorize from there, or artists and subcategorize from there, et cetera. Um, so we've, earlier this year, we launched a 1.0 on both platforms, Android and iOS. Um, right after we launched, we kind of gave it to a select inner network of, of friends and family, about a couple hundred people that was like a beta test to, to work some kinks out and get some feedback and see what kind of bugs we came across. And then about two months ago, we launched a 2.0 for iOS, but we're actually on 2.3 right now. Um, and... Based on, the, based on our beta release, like 80% of our uh, users were iPhone, so we kind of decided to focus on that. Um, so we're, we're hoping to get a few thousand users by the end of this year. We're, kinda, we're at about 500 right now, uh, about a, few, a couple hundred active users, 500-ish downloads. Um, and then about spring to early summer next year, we're going to look for, for some investment to further market the app. Um, but... This is kind of like our projections on numbers. Um, so, so for generating revenue, we have a few options that we're looking at, uh, but ultimately, we, and the reason, one of the questions that Brian will ultimately ask me while I'm here is to look for technical co-founders. We're looking for a development team to partner up with. Right now, actually, we offshored for the first couple versions, but we're looking to get some 
some local talent uh, under our house here. So these are just options for generating revenue. We kind of this is something we'd like to kind of discuss with our with our technical co-founders and see you know based on feedback etc what might work best for us. Uh, here you can kind of see how we compare and stack up against the the existing social networks and outlets. I mean people post quotes to post Facebook, Instagram, and etc all the time, but this is kind of fills that specific niche specifically for that, and it does it in a much simpler. I don't know, user-friendly kind of intuitive way that I think allows you to organize your echoes, the ones that you like to remember at least forever, in a way that's completely customizable and makes sense to each individual user. Um, so this is where we're at at uh, of right now at the moment. Um, again, we're, we're looking for, for technical funders right now, and then shortly after that, we've, we've have a couple lines of communications open with Investors in the area and outside of the area, some big ones, some smaller. Um, but before we before we get any money behind us, we'd like to get the the tech in house. All right, thank you. <laughs> Questions? Throw your hand up right away. Right down here in front. Yeah, could you explain a little bit more about the competitive difference with the social media platform? Yeah, so <clears throat> with uh, with Instagram, you kind of can't. Uh, so with with Facebook and Snapchat, it's not really meant for the, and Twitter is kind of meant for like statuses, updates, and kind of just thoughts. This is kind of meant specifically for like phrases. Um, with Instagram, it's meant for pictures, obviously, but people still tend to post quotes and phrases on there all the time, regardless. Um, and this allows you to A, keep those posts private, it allows you to categorize and subcategorize them in a completely customizable fashion. Um, and I mean, that kind of are like the stark differences really. Uh, it's just that this is, a, is, is specifically for the niche of quotes and, and verses or phrases. And you know, the customization factors is, is kind of what plays into effect as well. There's a few, a few, Several features we've left out of these initial versions. Just kind of we're waiting for future versions to come out. And capital for us, since we haven't had any investment yet, was limited at the front end. So we had to release a simple, a simple version of our idea. So we have some other things that we can have planned for it as well. Just kind of that's where it's at for now. Who's your target customer for this? Like, like what are you doing to find, and, and what are you doing to to get more of those on? Uh, we are we're targeting kind of like like university students and, and kind of like young professionals at the moment, we're hitting, you know, we're, we're getting articles published in random like kind of business art, business publications and uh, startup publications, et cetera. I got an article being written in the Michigan Daily actually currently and Deep Business in Detroit. Um, so we're hoping to speak at a couple other universities and schools in the near future here. So we're trying to get that kind of young adult Crowd to get behind it first, but really, I mean, in all honesty, I think the market can be anyone from from high school kids all the way to you know people who read on their Kindles and tablets who want to save those phrases in their in their uh, collection. Really. Question: How do you view like the user's life cycle of interacting with the app, like from onboarding throughout? There's a there's it, it's kind of there's a profile page that you can kind of like within your own and within other people's that you're connected with through the app, you can both see their timeline, just kind of like in a chronological, chronological feed, at least the ones that, the, those echoes that they choose to make public. And in addition, you can also filter through their individual categories and you can see their, well, again, the ones that they make public, you can see those echoes that they've posted within their categories as well if you'd like to search through those. That's something we're working on. I mean, the, the biggest obstacle is just for people to, to know who we are and that we're out there. Uh, but to be honest, everybody who's come along and, and downloaded it and come to use it has seen how useful it can be. And I mean, like, almost unanimously, the, the feedback and response that we've gotten is this is amazing, it's really well done, and, and I can't believe it hasn't, like, nobody's done it before. But personally, myself, I use it maybe, it's probably the app I use second most, maybe third. 
Um, just because, like I said, I'm constantly, I mean, referencing song lyrics, movies, shows, and you know, you in a, in a business when you're constantly getting mentored and looking for advice, etc., that becomes a, res or a resourceful tool as well for those as well. Have you talked? Have you tried speaking with your current users, like I don't know personally? I'm the, like the ones that keep coming back because that is really interesting. Like you're having like twenty to thirty percent of your users are coming back to the app. Have, have they shared like why they they come back? Yeah, to be honest, a lot of them have said that that it's just a good way to kill time. Like um, you know, really, I mean, you can look at, like I said, dozens of categories or, or thousands of authors that you can search through. Whether you want to s search by keyword or yeah. just go through the categories, and um, it's a I mean, it's a, like I said, it's a great way to kill time and, and kind of, uh, you know, organize your thoughts and, and one last question up here. So we thought about this as like a knowledge management tool, so different from quotes, the way you're describing it, but so for example, I draft contracts, and if I find language that I like, I like to put that language somewhere, and there's, as far as I know, not a really easy way for me to just snip that out. I, for the longest time, wanted something that was like Evernote, but at um, the more atomic level, just this sentence and have it somehow easily going into some database that I can retrieve later. It strikes me there could be um, uh, a whole market there, both for institutional customers, organizations that want some way of uh, sort of crowdsourcing and then withdrawing, uh, retrieving information across some body of employees. Uh, and also um, a, a broader segment of professionals that do similar types of work across uh, an industry might similarly be interested in using something like this. Although it's not, it's not quotes the way you you've been thinking about it so far. But, but I mean, ultimately, versus passages or you know what have you, yeah, definitely yep. excerpts, whatever you say, however you put it, you can use it for those as well. So have you thought about that that use case yet? Um, I mean, that's not. You, we thought about it. I mean, it wasn't like you said. It's kind of not like the the main avenue that we're targeting, but it is another another avenue and another way for people to use it. I mean, whatever people find useful or useful, whatever people find it useful for, that's great. I mean, I've used it for a number <coughs> of things, from I mean, from business practices to legal statements to you name it. I mean, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Feroz from Memray. Memray is a software as a service productivity application with advanced collaboration and social sharing features. This is a passion project of Feroz's and he's during the day makes money trading cryptocurrency as you do. Uh, but he's going to tell us all about what he's been working on. He had a launch I think it was like a month or two ago, is that right? Like uh, private, private beta? Well. Um, you know, it's been used by users for many years, and I've continually updated it. But uh, it's I'm just now turning into a business. Yeah, sweet. Okay, take it away. Um, okay, cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's play this. Play slideshow. All right, so I'm talking about memory. Um, so. Uh, to give you an idea of why memory was created, I like to use the analogy of the iPod. Um, it wasn't the first MP3 player, but it was one that allowed you to browse your music easily. And for the same reason, I came up with a new, better interface for a digital notebook. And so the notebook, you know, it's a tool to help us think, organize, and preserve information used by famous thinkers throughout the years. This is Da Vinci's notebook. <laughs> Um, we have digital and physical notebooks nowadays, um, and there are many key benefits of the digital notebook. Uh, two being accessibility and data integrity. Uh, if you value the information you're writing down, you're going to want to have it digital because physical notebooks are subject to being destroyed and or lost. Um, so in 2014, I needed to find a digital notebook. I had <coughs> files everywhere and. Um, I just needed a repository to put everything together. Um, so the different types of digital notebook solutions, uh, and the best ones have local plus cloud, native plus web, so you can access in any browser, and they're completely responsive, so they'll work on any screen size. Uh, this is the typical common UI of some of the most popular apps today. Uh, as you can see, they're all pretty similar. They have that notes list and the main editing area for each note. 
Uh, so why exactly is memory better? Um, and I'll go over six core problems. A uh, new better user interface. Uh, so if you think about browsing a physical, uh, a real notebook, um, it's better because you can view multiple notes in a single view and you, each note is in context of each other and you can browse them through a time series of pages, which is totally missing um, in, in the, these UIs. Um, so uh, that's what I've done here. As you can see, you have, it just happens to be quotes, but. <laughs> Um, you, you can, <laughs> but you can see multiple notes in one view and you have pages along with the benefits of the scrolling thing. So if you look at the view here, this is just uh, an example of comparing using memory with something like Evernote. Um, for me, the big deal was context because I wanted to see notes in context of the other ones um, and work between them. Uh, built for real-time syncing. Um, so uh, it's a, this is important because we have multiple devices nowadays and if you're switching between them, um, you don't want to overwrite uh, data with older data and it can be quite an issue. Try it with Evernote or other apps. They don't do that. Um, advanced collaboration. Uh, so I have Google Docs type collaboration, uh, but you can do concurrent editing. If you try it in Apple Notes, it'll crash even though they offer collaboration. Uh, same with uh, Evernote, it locks the notes, they don't have this, but you can also draw together in real time. Uh, so this is just, oh, sorry. So that's uh, just giving an example. Uh, two people adding a document, but you've seen that before. Bookmarking, this is something that's missing for most apps. And um, I'm, when I'm doing research, I need a notepad that keeps them together. So you can have your bookmarks here. You can actually view them in app. You can uh, copy and paste information from one bookmark back into your notes. And so it's important to keep them together instead of having two apps. Um, data integrity. This is also key for me uh, because I sometimes worry about key presses deleting my content and closing the app. But every operation in memory is saved. So um, no matter what, your data is never lost. So as you can see, and it's great for co collaboration because uh, when you come back to a document after multiple people have edited it, you sometimes want to rewind and play and see what people have done. Um, security, uh, we'll, we'll skip that. <laughs> uh, there's other, many other features. I kind of had fun with this over the years. Uh, flashcards is pretty cool for people who are studying. Um, and so uh, I'm going places uh, uh, with this and um, with the thought that my friend shares notepads with me on just stuff he randomly does and it's interesting following along because I can just uh, see what he's doing and it doesn't take extra work for him like a blog would because he's doing it for himself anyways. And so it's great to be able to share this stuff, that value that we do for ourselves. Um, <coughs> I'm just putting in a business model. Uh, we're going to have a pro subscription and uh, just slow operation costs. And uh, so uh, the current status is that uh, it's a live product, but I'm just getting the business model in. Um, and I'm focusing more now on just making it a, a company. And uh, these are ways you can help me. Um, switch from Evernote if you're a user. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you know, I really love my users um, I, I, because I, I love hearing their ideas. And so there's just a lot of ways you can help. Um, that's it. <laughs> Terrific. You build a tool to make your life better. And I'd like to kick off questions here. <coughs> right there. Um, have you thought through it all? Like how users can onboard or import their data from other um, like competitive resources? Yeah, no, that's a big problem because it, that's, there's a switching cost. And um, so, you know, once you pick an app like this, especially one like this, because you want a notebook for life, kind of, you know? You want to grow your research over the course of your life. And after you have thousands of notes, it can be very difficult to switch. And so um, that's good for people running the company, kind of, because you <laughs> harder to lose your users. Um, but um, yeah, uh, getting them to switch from <laughs> their previous app to yours is, is difficult. Um, I've looked into ways of doing that, and it's just really a matter of development time. It's possible. Evernote has exporting features and everything like that. So 
just more resources and being, s I've been working on this for years and being solo and doing this is just uh, overwhelming, so. Question down here. So is it a, a native app that's like something I download on my, on my iPhone? Or yeah, it's actually, um, I built this knowing that you, accessibility is core. And so with multiple devices coming out, um, and in the future you can't even predict, but what we do know is that the browser is ubiquitous. And so uh, I built it with uh, hybrid technologies that allows me, so I have native apps for all platforms. Uh, this is the Mac app right here. Uh, it's not available to the public right now, um, but I've been using it for a few months now and getting it ready. Um, so yeah, it's Windows, Mac, um, and all Android, iOS, and web. So all platforms. Question. Just curious, so how many users in total do you have right now? Um, I have a, a good, <coughs> You, like under, so we have different types of users. We have daily, weekly, monthly, and I really care about the daily users. You know, I have a list of users, um, and uh, but not all of them are daily. So the ones that are daily are about, I don't know, under 20, 20 or more. Um, but I have done no marketing so far. Uh, they're just um, friends and some, family, some random people. Uh, but then, you know, weekly users, maybe like 50, and then monthly, I, you know, maybe under 100. Um, so that's, that's the current story. But um, I'm hoping now that I'm gonna launch and spend more time like marketing and uh, I can gain more users. That's the, really the big next step for me. So you showed how it's in, you know it's in context. Uh, what about categories? Because you want to show them in context, but you also want to be able to categorize them for like different projects, different jobs. Yeah, definitely. So I solved that by using um, something I call dividers. And so um, if you see here uh, in your notepad, you um, have the notes, and if you click here, uh, you can categorize them into uh, different sections. So if I you know, click features, I can see that here. And then this is basically a sub notebook of memory features. If, if you that's support what labels though. Huh? You support labels so that you can apply yeah, and so labels to a note. Yep, and so tags, labels, tags. maybe the same thing. Yep, that's, uh, that's, that's how dividers kind of work and so you can easily do that just by clicking here. And your tags are global too. So uh, they're auto-fill across your notepads. One more question. Do I get you skipped over security. I just I kind of want to know a little bit more about Yeah. Yeah, um, so <coughs> what I found is in different applications is the encryption, uh, the best that I've seen is they encrypt on the device. Um, but then your encrypted information is stuck on the device. Uh, what I've done is made it so we encrypt locally um, and with a key that you've chosen, but then I even go further and I SHA-256 that key. Uh, so uh, your password isn't stored in memory, your key. And then um, I think uh, the encrypted information is stored in our database in the cloud. Um, and the, the good thing about this is then when you uh, access your encrypted information from anywhere, or you can even share pages with uh, notepads with collaborators or notes. So <coughs> if I share a notepad that's encrypted with, a, uh, with actually not with just a collaborator, with anyone by uh, getting like a public link, uh, you can customize that public link. So it could be memory.com slash memory or my stuff. And you can share it. So when a user gets it, they, can't view the information unless they have the decryption key. So you can easily share encrypted information with each other and nobody can decrypt that information without the key. Can you tell that he does cryptocurrency trading? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks so much for us, really appreciate it. Yeah.
shift gears now to physical goods. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome Anna from Noah Baby Shoes. Noah Baby Shoes have a mini natural ground in each shoe to improve the balance and help uh, and help babies uh, help the baby's feet and muscles develop naturally. Um, uh, the fun origin story of this one uh, is. Anna's brother was, uh, told her he was gonna be becoming a father, and uh, she had already been, uh, started studying about baby shoes and said, huh, there's this um, kind of like gap in the market here for uh, you know, a really quality uh, baby shoe. And uh, so she, she shifted some of her <coughs> master's uh, research. What, what was your, your degree? It was in? Um, design. Design, yeah. And, and so you shifted, you actually created your uh, research and change your master's research around this creating a better shoe for, for babies. Yeah. This is terrific. So, um, Anna, take it away. Thank you. Good evening. This is Noé, a Brazilian startup. Do you feel any pain in your feet, in your knee, in your hip, in your back? That can occur because your feet didn't develop in the way they were supposed to grow. We have, we have evolved for millions of years to learn how to walk on a natural ground, irregular and dynamic. This type of surface causes an instability that uh, stimulates the muscles and the joints of the feet. So, <coughs> our feet, uh, when muscular skeletal bases have the environment required to grow strong. But, since uh, 100 years ago, we have learned that to walk on paved surface and we have, we have used inadequate shoes. Hard and flat surface uh, don't destabilize the, the baby's walking, so uh, the baby doesn't have to make an effort to keep its balance. Inadequate shoes can change the pattern of the walking and disturb the natural movements. So a lot of people around the world have feet problems or other musculoskeletal problems. Brazilian, uh, 75 of Brazilian children, by the time they reach seven years old, uh, they have problems with their feet. And 40% of American adults say that they have feet problems. Therefore, now you know what is the best for your baby learn to walk, is to learn walk uh, barefoot on a natural surface. But what about the urban babes? How can you give them this opportunity? Precisely, we have designed a mini natural ground in each shoe. Noé, creating long last effects on a step at a time. Now, the urban babes can have the benefits to walk on the natural surface to grow healthy. Why is Noé so special? Noé is a unique is the only baby shoe with a totally dynamic insole in the world. It was patented and has PCT. It's the only one in Brazil and probably in the world that has been tested scientifically by PhDs to prove the beneficial effects on babies walking. The test confirmed <coughs> that the babies walking using Noé or barefoot are the same, unlike in 14 tested brands commonly found on the market. This microparticle technology acts like a natural surface, uh, like a grass, sand, and grass. Now it has been purchased for more than one uh, 1,020 customers in Brazil during the last nine months, uh, plus a two days local fair. We have an aid NPS. Uh, Caio is one of our customers. We have to make uh, special shoes for, for Kai because he has unilateral club foot. And the result of this was fantastic because now uh, Kai started to walk five days uh, after beginning <coughs> to wear Naya. Uh, here are our uh, company team. We are three uh, professionals who complement each other to make Naya work. I am PhD design researcher. I have been working with human-centered design since 2010. Leandro is our CFO. Uh, he has been working as a manager of a huge, retail, huge fashion retail store in Brazil since 2000. And Nelly is our chef of production. 
uh, for 10 years he, she has been uh, working in order to create high quality and aesthetic products. Together since January, we have the main skill needed to put Noé on the top of the baby shoes market. Noé's timeline started at Aname, a baby design institute. Uh, after four years of research and product development, we launched Noé on February. <coughs> so babies can, can have to be a, an opportunity uh, to be an, an adult uh, healthier than us. These are our next steps. We are looking for a partnership to sell internationally and to distribute it too. Let's get together to launch NOE on the USA market. Do you want to be our partner? NOE, natural as well as barrier food, creating long lasting effects, long last, long lasting effects on a step at a time. Thank you. your son health. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good for your business. Uh, up in the back right now. It's only for baby. Uh, uh, like different types is there? Is there to customize it? You mentioned the one baby with club, club foot, like, or is it just like a couple different models? Uh, it's a couple different models, but for each baby, especially, we have to make a um, little uh, customized because he has one feet uh, different of the other. So we have to to make an special noise for for him because the 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 feet and the leg it's different. So. So do they send in their but the technology, the technology is the same. Okay, so how does, so how do you measure that baby's foot, or they send something in the mail with their imprint, or is that all done in person right now? We ask for the mother to 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 make the measures of the the feet and the, and the leg to make a, an special for him. It is. Question over here. Uh, do you think there's an adult market for that soul? Yeah. Yeah, because um, when an adult uh, takes Noé, whoa, I would like one for me. So it's our next step. Um, especially for, for elderly, because the elders have the problem to, to keep this, the balance too. So it's probably on market. I have uh, two questions. Actually, I want to comment on this thing. Actually, I'm going for physical therapy because of my uh, arthritis. And he put me on to uneven spaces to balance. Mm -hmm. And I think I realized the mistake was I was doing it on with shoes on. Actually, I should probably remove my shoes. But uh, how do you, your production, is that like, uh, is that automated? Uh, is that like, is your production automated? Like, uh, is it like 3D printing or how do you do this? No, no, it's an it's a industry. Our production is um, a combine of toy industry and um, uh, beach clothes industry. It's a combine of these this two, this two industries. And we have an, a, a special machine to, to construct the soul because the soul is made with uh, micro particles and this micro particle can, it's, uh, it's put for this. So we have the, the special <coughs> machine to do this. Question right here. Yeah, uh, so how exactly do you go to market to your consumer? Do you have a direct relationship with your consumer where they buy directly from you, or is it price such that there's a wholesale <coughs> price to distributors, <coughs> sellers, uh, like stores to buy directly from you? It's a next step. Because until now, you have a little production, little uh, uh, little capacity of production. So 
Now we can't do uh, partnerships to sell uh, in a specific store, in a physical store, because we we can't give them. But uh, we we are organizing our industry to to be bigger and to and to can um, attend this type of market. So I want to buy one from you today. I go directly to you. No, 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 I have an uh, online store. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. Oh, question here. Okay. How long do the babies wear the shoes? Do you have any competitors? To six months until 30 months. It's two years of using it. In this time, the baby will use uh, four pairs. In competition, as you said, like, th is there any direct competition that you view? With the same technology, no, and uh, it's the unique shoe that was tested. So the other shoes that have in the market say that uh, that do something, but never tested. So we say and we test it, so we can confirm this. One last question up in the back. Are you in partnerships with? Uh, Pediatricians or podiatrists or, or other related uh, fields. In in uh, in our city, yes, you have a partnership with um, a pediatric association, but we have to do more because it's only when uh, in my city in, in Brazil. Which city? Belo Horizonte. It's the middle of Brazil. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brazil to Detroit, uh, <laughs> Dwayne Watkins is going to give us our next pitch. Uh, you guys may have heard, uh, you, you pitched like once before, right? Yeah, yeah. A, couple months, a couple months back. He's going to give us an update about the cellular EMT. Uh, they provide on-demand service to repair cell phones, tablets, smart everythings. Um, uh, fun fact, uh, Dwayne is the unofficial world's fastest phone repairer. Uh, he just doesn't want to give a bunch of money to Guinness <laughs> quite yet. Um, and uh, he's got his shop in Detroit. He's going to tell us a bit about it. All right. So my name is Dwayne Watkins, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Cellular EMT. What we are is an online marketplace for that connects uh, cell phone repair technicians to customers who need their devices repaired. So we actually come to you and, and fix the devices on site. So Cellular EMT started as, um, we started as customers. So my wife and I, uh, she was pregnant with our daughter and she broke her phone. And we went to get our fo phone fixed and it was a really undesirable experience. The technician wasn't very um, technically skilled. He told us that you know the repair would be done in an hour. It took a couple days. So we figured that there has to be a better solution. I worked in telecom at the time for Samsung. Uh, so I did a little market research and we, we opened our own shop. Um, we had some great success at the beginning and then some failures as we tried to expand. So I've tried to figure out a way to do uh, phone repair uh, better for the customer and more efficient for me as a business owner. And that's when we came up with uh, the on-demand platform. So we found out that through, through some research that there's over 60,000 broken devices each day in the US. So 60,000 rep potential repairs for us enter the repair pool each and every day. And you know you might think with such a big business there might be a leader, but data kind of proves that, that people are searching for a place to get their phone fixed. So in September alone there were 4.4 million searches for unbranded cell phone repair. So people just don't know where to get their device fixed or they're looking for a better option. So you have a problem. I don't have time to get my phone fixed. I don't know where to get it fixed. Most of this is because technicians are undertrained and slow. The experience is different from store to store and consumers are busy. They don't have time to wait the three to five hours to days that it takes to get your phone fixed. You know, I don't know who's been to the Apple store, but they offer great service, but it just takes too damn long. So. Our solution is the cellular EMT platform. So it's an on-demand platform. It connects technicians that are certified already in the repair marketplace to customers who need their devices fixed. Um, we're, we're available as a web app and also uh, pass-through apps for uh, Google and the uh, iOS Play Store. 
So it's just our landing page. And the way it works, you choose the device that you want fixed, you enter your location, and you connect with the technician. What makes us a little bit different is we have tech tracking technology. So when you connect with that technician, he gets a uh, text message to accept the, the, the order, and then you get a text back. It's really similar to Uber, and you can track them all the way to your door and through the repair process till it's complete. So there's just a picture of our interface. Um, this is how far the technician is away from me. You expect them in one minute, and there's your order total. So since January we launched, we have over $40,000 in sales, and we've grown 20% month over month. Each month we've been in, 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 uh, in, <clears throat> in operation. And uh, we're happy to announce that we are now serving Ann Arbor. So we just took residency at, at Spark in Ann Arbor, and we're serving Ann Arbor. So if anybody needs a phone repair, you can use the code WELCOME uh, on our platform to save $25. So our go-to-market strategy, um, so Detroit, Ann Arbor right now, uh, in Q1 of, or Q2 of 2018, we're looking to launch in uh, Milwaukee, and then shortly after, Chicago, Indy, and Columbus, cities that I'm familiar with that are, are close to home. Uh, then we're looking to fill out the Midwest and the, the rest of the top 10 cities and for a, nat a national launch in 2020. So our go-to-market strategy is a little bit different than, than most uh, marketplace um, companies so instead of using double-sided marketing like where we're paying money to advertise to uh, technicians and to advertise to to customers we actually uh, have built out tech trucks where we're going to send those to the cities uh, with our technicians we'll start working right away very targeted adwords um, campaign and then we want to partner with local repair shops add it as a secondary form of income and kind of help propel them to uh, some more successes uh, we, we started that in Detroit, and it's worked out really well for us. So our projected growth um, it, with the launch that we said, right now we're, we're projected to be around $200,000 in sales in, in 2018 if we continue our growth. If we expand to the five cities, we're looking at million, then $10 million. So currently, we're, we're getting ready to raise our first round of seed funding. So we're looking for intros to either potential customers and to uh, investors. So we also have tech days. So if you know anyone or work at a company with that, that you think might bring value to the company, we offer a discount to everyone that works at the company. We come down, we hang out for the day, set up a table, answer questions about you know, what, what you could possibly you know, do better to uh, have your phone work better, any issues you're having, we do that. And then we can do repairs right on the site. We offer a discount. Um, it's really cool. We, we do it with... Uh, uh, Quicken Loans and their family of companies. So we've had great success with them. And then we have the app that's available. If you guys uh, feel like downloading it and give it five stars, it really helps us out. So appreciate it. Thank you guys for your time. Thanks. A lot, a lot has a lot has changed since we last heard yeah. from you. Uh, starting with this guy right here. Questions. So obviously you're competing against uh, just the whole world of new phones coming out, like this Apple X is coming out. So a year from now, that's going to be a broken phone. How do you plan to stay on top of the new technology and, and train? Other, otherwise, you're going to end up like all the other folks that you've been to before, like under training technicians. So we, we, we're always proactive. I mean, usually the day the phone comes out, there's tutorials. Um, and we're, it's the same for our technicians. I mean, we, we send out information day of, day after. Uh, we are a little bit more picky with, with our parts selection. So like right now, I'm not fixing the iPhone X. If you offer me $1,000, I still wouldn't do it. I just send you the Apple store. Uh, it's just because the parts aren't good enough yet to, to like back our, our quality. We offer a lifetime warranty on, on our stuff. And it just doesn't make sense to, to work with them. As far as new devices coming out, I mean, everything pretty much now is on a payment plan or, or finance or leased. So it's, that, that holds really well for us and, and our growth because people are less interested in getting that two-year upgrade or waiting. Uh, now they can upgrade earlier, but they can only upgrade if they have a, a non-broken device. So we fix tons of phones every day that are going back to the, the carrier. And they just, you know, people need a solution because like, they want to upgrade. So I mean, it's an app for, for easy use. We have a tech support function that, that we're working on. It's in beta testing right now. 
So if you had issues with your iPhone or Android, we can actually, uh, we use a software where we can come in and, and view and, and take over your screen and, and make changes and things for you. So that's, that's kind of added value. But just, you know, having an app, I, it's, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's like the best marketing t tool it seems like so far. I, we didn't, we, I, I made it myself, so it's not like we spent a ton of money on it. It was fairly easy to do. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, margins I don't like to talk about uh, in front of a room full of people. They're very high. So, <laughs> so if, you, if, if you're an investor, I'd love to talk after the, the, the meeting. Um, if my phone is broken, how do I contact you without using the app because my phone is broken? So it's a, it's a web app? <laughs> so yeah, it's available on, online. Thank you. Can you describe the technician selection process a little more? Is it truly an August Duper where anyone can come to you and sign up? No, 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 no. We only work with seasoned technicians that are already in the field. So we're not interested in doing any any um, new training of technicians. Now maybe this will change a little bit when we when we go to a new city that might not have coverage uh, currently or not a great option. But what we'll do is like a ride along with our technicians that we send out in the field so we can really assure great customer service because that's what's lacking in the marketplace. Like I think tons of people in the room have had their phone fixed and everyone's got like a horror story or heard of a horror story like, I got my phone fixed and two days later it didn't work anymore. And that's, that's what we want to avoid because just the, just the, knowing the business really well, even the Apple store that are supposed to be like the, the experts for iPhone repair, they're, they give some of the most misinformation uh, daily. You know, all batteries are unrepairable, uh, charging ports are unrepairable. It's just they can't do it there. We do that all that stuff every day, so. The interface with the insurance company, can you get a phone insurance, like can you build them directly or get? So we have a, so we're just rolling out a financing option where, where you make a down payment and spread the payments monthly. Uh, the insurance companies, we, we work with them, we'll invoice, invoice you and you make the payment and we'll give you everything you need to get re, uh, like, uh, repaid by them. But currently they, they have their own solutions and like we're, we're in talks with the big companies but no one right now is, is we're, we're not, like we don't have any deals with them yet. So Square Trade is on the books for us for another call in like the end of the, end of the next month. So, All right, one more question. Yes. So, uh, how can this platform bring <coughs> to the technicians, or do they really need the platform to, you know, make a? Yeah, I mean, it's it's totally free for them to use, and it, it, it's free marketing. So, <laughs> what we found in our in our in our research is that it's not necessarily that people don't have the money to get their phone fixed. One, they don't know a good place to trust, and two, they don't have the time. So, we're trying to like refocus. Uh, Kind of poor business practices by some of these these repair stores and ha give them additional revenue. I, in Ann Arbor, I know there's like three or four phone repair stores that I that I know directly, and I think that us launching here, we probably won't have a very big effect on their current business because there's tons of people that are like first we're in a, a little bit different price range. We're not the cheapest option by any any means, but the convenience that we offer, especially like millennials who want to pay for experiences as opposed to like just hard goods like that kind of experience using an app to, to get the the like a service done I think that's like a different customer than what they're currently working with in some in some regards some it's you know we might grab from their pool but I think for the most part I think we'll be more people in that area will be getting their phone fixed because of our service cool thanks so much Wayne. thanks guys Final pitch of the evening. Um, please welcome MJ Cartwright down to tell us about Court Innovations. Uh, court Innovations help public courts who want to improve access to justice for the public, saving time and money uh, with Matterhorn, uh, which is an online dispute resolution software as a service platform. Um, and it's deployed actually in a number of courts in the state of Michigan and I believe a couple adjacent states. Um, fun fact about them. Uh, so, company mascot is down here, if you're curious, and he's a, a toy mountain goat, scaling the mountains, Axel, and uh, he'll be in attendance all evening. So, uh, here I am. 
Great, thanks. Thanks for having us here. And uh, MJ with Court Innovations. JJ, you don't have to be an MJ or a JJ to be part of our team. We have a Dunry here as well. And uh, JJ is a law professor here at the University of Michigan, uh, right upstairs. So we're all about going to court without actually having to go to court. And we're focusing on solving some really big problems out there in the court system. And if you think about the backlog, having to wait in lines from Los Angeles, California, down in Alabama, these are lines you have to wait in to do your business in court. New York City, uh, down in Texas, anytime you have to do business, whether it's criminal or civil matters, you have to go to court, you have to wait a long time to deal with your issues in court. Also, if you're in law enforcement and you have to go to court to deal with your case or my case, you're wasting time where you're actually not out there really enforcing the law, which is really where we want our law enforcement to be. When you're, think about getting to court, you know, you're dealing with traffic, your Uber, your taxi cab, your bus, or the weather elements if you're in the city trying to get into court, or you can't physically get there. You have other things that you need to be doing except that are really important for your life. Uh, what if you just live in the middle of nowhere and you really have only one means to get to court and you just take all day to get there? These are real life problems. You can't get the day off from work. You take a day off from work, you may not get paid that day. You're a student and you have to have an exam. You cannot get to court that day. These are real problems with kids. You can't get to court. And so what do you do about them? Now, there's the whole really issue is being scared to death to go to court. And you know, I go to court every day now, it seems, dealing with our customers. I'm even scared going into court some of the time. You know, this is the Salem witch trials. I mean, you know, how would you feel if, if you're up there, you don't have the finances, do what you need to do, and you're up in front of a courthouse? What do you do? You just don't go to court. And you really um, are overwhelmed with panic, and your courtroom can be empty when your courtroom should be full when you're dealing with situations. So you have long lines, and you have people not going to court, and not being able to reach those people who need to go to court. So we're all about bringing the court to you. And as we do this, we're opening another channel to access to justice. And that is really the thing. We don't take away what's there today. We are adding another door, door number four, to uh, access the court. Right now, we've had over 25,000 disputes resolved with court innovations. We have uh, solutions that span Quite a few different areas. We started off in the traffic area, moved into handling pleas, warrants, as well as some, uh, some family court issues, and dealing with small claims. And I'll take you through a couple examples here. One is small claims. Your neighbor's tree falls over on your car. You want to deal with this dispute. You're going to tree hug it out, and you're going to get online, and you're going to have the back and forth. If you need to bring in a mediator, need to bring in a referee, you can do that. And you end up resolving your dispute, you're signing, you have an agreement, whether it's the court or whether it's with the dispute center, you do all of it online and move forward. If you get pulled over with a traffic ticket, heaven forbid, and you um, basically have the officer writes you up, this is my ticket, so you end up, uh, this is what you currently have to deal with. This is where you actually end up resolving a lesser charge because I have a good driving record or had a good driving record, shall I say and you, you move on and resolve your dispute. One of the things that we really do focus on as a company, and we dealt with the Michigan State Court Administration Office, a part of the Supreme Court, is focusing on outcomes. And we've been able to show that you have 64% more access to your court when you have a Matterhorn platform. You have 83% less staff time involved in dealing with disputes when you have the Matterhorn platform in the court. You resolve your cases 72% faster. I mean, these are phenomenal numbers that we've been able to show for our customers. Who do we sell to in the courts? We sell to the court administrators. Uh, the, these are some court administrators right down the road. And we also sell to the judges. This is our Highland Park judge, and she is all about providing access to justice for her constituents in Highland Park. So these are the people we sell to. And we are in 30 courts now. Uh, we are expanding those. We're in Michigan, recently in Ohio, uh, believe it or not, Ohio State University. And we're in uh, Cleveland, we're launching next week. We're gonna be in Arkansas next week at Sherwood. 
Arkansas right outside of Little Rock and Texas in a couple of weeks just outside of Dallas uh, as we start to get into new states and expand online dispute resolution with these courts. The opportunity is big. The opportunity is over 15,000 courts across the United States and you look at that being a part of even a bigger market which is a growing legal services market that's really increasing by the billion, billions. That's Court Innovations and look forward to having you guys ask your court and municipality to involve Matterhorn. So it, it does vary. It's a great question. You know, the court administrators love to see those those stats that we can show them to save time. They have to look at their court as being a process and not just a building. And when we can get that barrier of change, then we can get in get in the door. It's a great question. How do you make money? We sell to the courts. Okay, so we sell software as a service platform, and we sell on subscription, and that's how we get our money. Uh, there's other courts that we do a transaction basis, uh, that ones that aren't quite sure it's going to work yet, but still it's based on subscription or transactions. Mm -hmm. How do you determine how much to charge the court if you've got 15000 out there? How, so like, how, how is that determined? And, um, and do you have a salesperson that's calling on that court? And lastly, um, uh, who else is in the space that could Mm -hmm. It sounds like they're going to be pretty entrenched once they're familiar and using their tool, your tool. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was in, I think I was in San Jose a couple of months ago, and somebody was doing something similar with mediation. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were ide ideation was to get into mm -hmm. the space. So that, that's just, just the question. Uh, quite a few questions. So we base our pricing on volume of transactions when we go into a court. We have um, a few salespeople as part of our team to go out there and call on the courts, but we're also expanding and dealing with partners who already have adjacent products in those courts to add our stuff to, to sell those. And there are some online dispute resolution that comes out of the <coughs> non-court space that we see out there. Uh, none of them have um, the, the established outcomes in the court, and those are really what we're touting out there. Question, Bill. Security, uh, as far as software security, so it's um, the security varies on what the court wants to have in there. Whether it's a you know login and, and OAuth or whatever security is required by that particular court that we're dealing with, and the more serious the case, the more serious the the security. But that's um, uh, all of the servers that we're on cloud-based server really. Uh, comply with all even the HIPAA security that's out there. So it's as about as secure as you can get in this day and, and age for the participants and for the courts. Doug? How do you get the people involved with dispute resolution like mediators on your platform? Presumably all the different municipalities have different licensing requirements for those mediators. Yeah, so the courts already have the mediators set up. And so when we come on board in the first court we've been working with down in Columbus, Ohio, the court offers the, the mediators uh, for, for them. And so one, it's a new thing for mediators to get used to doing online, but the, uh, it, it's really new for us bringing mediators in, okay? But when you look at some of the cases that are around more of the criminal activities or traffic activities, you end up having negotiations, and it's not with the mediator, it's with either the prosecutor, the law enforcement, uh, and then the judge or the magistrate in the court. So there's different types of mediators that we really end up using, using that term a little more loosely, because it's pretty broad. Hey, um, it's seems like there's a lot of room for growth here for yes. you. I, I'm curious, I used to testify in family court as an adoption okay. foster worker, Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, is there any ideas about like how you would incorporate video chat so that you would actually be able to testify you know, 
you know, with your face. Yeah, you know, it does come up, and you know, we're certainly considering that, but this is really meant to be asynchronous, to help with all those problems with people who can't get to court, and they can't really do it during the normal court hours. But that, that add-on... My foster parents and my, like, all my different people yeah. who needed to be there like, couldn't be there in person very often. Mm -hmm. So being able to, like, video chat in mm -hmm. would be... Yeah, awesome. yeah, it, it could be a good option. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question. So given that the whole point is to provide more access, is there any difficulty with the fact that these people have their <coughs> import duties to deal with and then they have this online? Is there, are they hiring someone whose sole responsibility is Matterhorn or are people doing it kind of back and forth? I'm just curious how the workflow goes within the court. No, it makes sense. So we're, we're handling the high volume cases and so you can do more cases faster on the Matterhorn platform then when you're dealing with other cases in your court, you have more time to deal with those more serious cases. So you end up having less traffic in the court. You actually end up having uh, more time for your other cases. So yeah, you do some cases here. Uh, some of the judges do them at home. I mean, they, they really do them. So you're, you, you are working less hours overall when it comes right down to it. Less staff is really required overall when you actually look at these as handling your high volume cases but you still want the staff there to handle the more serious more involved cases so it's, it's not an extra add-on but i can see where you you might think that but we, we've proven that it's not mm -hmm. thank you All right thank you, thank you. Community announcement time. If you have a meetup, if you're hiring, if you want to put yourself out there on the hire me job market uh, to this room, please line up along the side here and we'll make time for everyone to make their announcement. Um, also, in the meantime, if you were going to come out to Pizza House, can you do me a favor and raise your hand and keep it high up? I'm going to send a picture to Phil at Spark and he is going to. Uh, Tell them how many pizzas to look at. <laughs> and now, small price to pay for free pizza. Right. I got everybody in here. Thank you. That's awesome. Take us off. So they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. We copied, uh, I'm from Traverse City, and we copied A2 in tech. And so we, and MJ actually presented there, what, like two, three months ago? Yes, yeah, so we copied A2 New Tech. We call it TC New Tech. So, um, but anyway, so uh, it actually is a pretty large group. And we got a lot of people, a lot of investors that show up every month. Um, so I'm inviting all the presenters that presented today, if you're interested. Um, you go to tcnewtech.org and sign up right there. Just talk to me tonight. I'll be over there uh, having a piece of pizza. So it's all about what I'm coming to. Oh, so we're at... Like I said, we copy a lot of stuff you guys do on here. So we're copying the uh, Tech Homecoming. So if you're from Traverse City, which I know somebody back there is, right? Yeah. I'm um, going to be uh, doing the Tech Homecoming in Traverse City tomorrow night at the workshop, which is a, a group club. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I've, I've spent about 20 years of my life working on foreign languages, speaking. Uh, I lived in France for a couple of years. My wife's from Brazil, and I've learned foreign languages. And I started a business called Fluent, F-L-O-O-A-N-T. And the idea is people that have studied in the classroom from books, et cetera, need to practice with native speakers. And currently, the way I've been able to do that is to find native speakers, go to the country, pra actually practice. But that may not be practical uh, for everybody. So Fluent would connect a native speaker wherever they are in the world with somebody that just needs to practice the language, not to learn the language, the grammar, et cetera, but just to practice. Um, and this, to get this done right, we need a good mobile app developer so that we can connect somebody in Brazil that speaks Portuguese with somebody here that's on their commute home that just wants to speak, practice for 20 minutes in their car. So if anyone is interested in this idea, I'll hang out over here a little bit and uh, give you a business card. We'd love to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you. So um, thanks for coming, everyone. I just wanted to invite everyone out to Detroit on Wednesday, December 6th for Startup Grind. Uh, we have Stacy Brown 
Philpot from TaskRabbit doing a live, uh, she's a CEO doing a, uh, like a, a live web, web chat. Um, it, I set up a coupon code for you guys. So it's new tech, it gets you half off. It's like five bucks uh, with the coupon code. If you guys get tickets early, uh, it comes with dinner, networking, and some of the like brightest and best uh, like founders and, and C-level people in, in Detroit. So uh, anybody wants to come out, please come see me. I'll give you information. It's, a, it's at Bamboo Detroit downtown. So thank you guys. Thanks. Oh, also, to anyone that's making an announcement, if you put a comment on the meetup group, everyone here will get it too. So that's a good way to get it out to everybody. Hi everyone, I'm Jason. I'm a law student here at the university. And we just want to make you aware of the legal clinic and the services that are available to you. So a uh, legal clinic here is student attorneys like myself working for licensed attorneys like Dana, and we provide legal <coughs> services to members of the community and the university, um, and it's free, so that's the big attraction. Uh, I work in the entrepreneurship clinic, and so we specialize with startups and young tech companies. Um, and we do services anywhere from formation to financing, intellectual property rights, really the whole gamut. Um, and Rosa works for another clinic she's going to talk to you about. I am from the Transaction Lab and Clinic. We focus on slightly different issues like licensing, um, customer agreements, supply agreements. We also help with organization, organizational documents like uh, bylaws, uh, operating agreements, but also we help with uh, website terms. Um, it, it, it is possible that the two clinics may overlap, but it's not really a problem. We can also work together. Um, so we're here to help you solve your problems for free. And if you're interested, you, we, 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 you can talk to us there after the event is Thanks. Thanks. Everybody, I am Edward Cyborg with Forever Labs. And we are a new company, uh, been operational for just under about two years, uh, based out of Ann Arbor. Uh, we just graduated from the summer 17 batch of Y Combinator, and we are hiring a full stack developer uh, with Ruby experience. We're three full-time founders, uh, then we also have three employees that we've hired uh, since YC, uh, looking for a fourth. So if anybody is interested, if that person is you, or if you know somebody that you think might be a good fit that should talk to us, please get in touch with me. Uh, you can reach me at ed at foreverlabs.com by email or just find me and I'll give you a card. Feel Thank free you. to throw your info on the whiteboard. Thanks. Thanks. Hello, my name is Torben Neudoffer. Um, I am, uh, uh, I'm here, my company's name is Script Incorporated. Um, what we've done, uh, I've got a partner in uh, Bangalore. I was in San Francisco in the Bay Area. I'm from the car business, car dealerships. What we've done, and I think we're the first ones out there to do it, um, is we what we're doing is we're transcribing in real time inbound phone calls to text uh, on a phone call. So I can show it to you later if you like, where the, the phone call will come into my phone and then whatever's being said, we're translating that into text with the Google Speech API, and then we're feeding it into our API.ai bot, which is then suggesting a response for conversation intelligence. So it goes like this. Somebody calls in, says, hey, I want a best price on a car. We translate that to text. We then feed that in the bot, and then three suggested responses or multiple suggested responses <coughs> appear on my phone. So then I can say, sir, Glad to get you that price. In addition, can I get you down payments and monthly payments? Or somebody calls in and says, hello. It says, hello, thanks for calling Rochester BMW. What can I get you information on? So it's a real-time dynamic moving script. We're also doing it for chat and email and video as well. So we've, we've, we've done it all already. Um, I'm working with the largest automotive group in here in, in, in Michigan, Suburban Group. Um, in implementing it into that store and building it out store by store. There's about 20,000 U.S. stores in automotive, uh, but clearly it has functionality, and I'm not the only person, I'm sure, doing this now because of the open Google Speech API. The advantage that we have is automotive. We have a very narrow lexicon of what you can be talking about. You know, you're going to be talking about a car, a down payment, a monthly payment. I need to talk to my wife. I can't afford it. It's too much money. I'm going to sleep on it. I need a soul search. So we're trying to 
grab automotive and go as fast as possible. And by grabbing automotive or as much of it as possible, we can build that bot to be extremely conversational so we can apply it to you know, that insurance company or that financial company that's having that same objection. I need to talk to my wife, I, I need some help, blah, blah, blah. In addition to those scripts for, for populating product information, you know, I saw What are you asking for here? Sorry, I'm, sorry. That's the no. whole five minute pitch. Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, I'm a salesperson, so yeah. I need to take the time. Um, but thank you. So I'm looking for, um, we're two founders, I'm looking for somebody with machine learning, um, AI uh, background, um, or legal patent information helping, you know, in that vein, linguist, sales business, MBA. MBA. Thanks, guys. My name's Torben. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sam Dosi. I run a couple of organizations in town, so I'm going to say some announcements, but say them fast. So, uh, if you were interested in what was being built tonight and you say to yourself, I want to build my own startup, uh, come visit us at Ann Arbor Coffee and Stories. <coughs> we're also on Meetup. Uh, we meet every other Wednesday. I think our next meetup is around December 6-ish. It's on the meetup page. I'm not a calendar of meetup is. Uh, check that out. Uh, if you enjoy networking, uh, if you want to have some beers, if you enjoy startups, uh, two weeks from now we'll have the A2 Brew Tech. It'll be on the same A2 New Tech page as this event. Uh, and I'll post all these things in the comments. And if you're looking for co-working space, if you're a startup and you want to have some desks, come check out the Tech Brewery. Uh, Tech Brewery has a lot of open desks that are there for startups. It started out with dual security and a lot of great history has gone through it. Uh, you can talk to me or I'm going to comment on the meetup page, so just look for it there. And thank you for your time. Beer 30. Yeah, Beer 30, uh, maybe not this week though, but yes, that's another event as well. I'll mark it all here. So. <laughs> uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Vail. I'm a uh, CEO for a PLM software called Fuse PLM, uh, that is to uh, help for product development companies in the hardware and um, electronics, uh, IoT devices development company. Uh, I pitched here, I think, uh, seven months ago. So uh, now we have around four or five uh, customers and a few lined up. All of them are inbound. We never reach out to anyone. I'm lucky for that. That's one announcement. I have one more announcement. Uh, you know, uh, many of you may have some idea for app. I, I don't know whether I want to develop it, how much it would cost, should I try it out? So I had some similar uh, app ideas uh, uh, last year and I was struggling to find a development company. So I started my own uh, startup company called uh, freshlances.com. So that uh, the ideology of the company is if you have an app idea, come to us and we protect your IP and then we try to build an app uh, in 100 hours as a prototype. If you like it, we'll proceed for the development, otherwise you don't have to pay for it. That's the idea of that. You check it out, freshlances.com. Uh, so those are the announcement. Thank you. It's me again. Just dropping some contact cards for any uh, potential developers, tech teams, programmers, etc. If you are interested, get a hold of me, please. Or if you know somebody, have them get a hold of me or give me their contact info one way or the other. Thanks for your time, guys. Gotta grab this too. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Sean. Um, so I just want to tell you guys that um, I'm from a uh, incubator, uh, incubation service firm. So we are by far the, I'm come from China. We are by far the largest incubation <coughs> service firm in China over the past 20 years. We've incubated over 5,000 firms, 35 of them went IPO. And we just set up our first uh, US office uh, on North Campus on the Green Road. Uh, so if you guys are looking for uh, office facility, if, you're, if you guys are looking for investments, or if you guys want to access to the Chinese market, just come to talk to me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anthony Crook, and I founded a company called Priority Networks, and uh, it's going to sound familiar. It's uh, actually a voice interactive uh, healthcare app, and uh, my partner and I just uh, created it at the beginning of this year. Uh, now that we've uh, pitched to a couple of the investors, one of the things we're recognizing is it still is at um, the, 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 uh, say the, the second prototype level. So I'm actually looking for uh, those that have either a, a machine learning uh, computer science <coughs> background and or a user experience background to, to join our team. Uh, so uh, I've got business cards if you guys want to talk or if you even know someone that's interested in, in uh, specializing in the user experience piece. And this is a, a Google uh, as well as an Apple 
uh, that as well. So thanks, everybody. Uh, I got the idea from the gentleman. Uh, they just I actually just had these in my backpack. Some I don't know uh, nice flyers and. Um, uh, also, uh, I started a Bitcoin meetup, if anyone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just have a couple uh, quick announcements. So, uh, Tech Homecoming, you probably heard about that. It's happening at Fred's at 4 to 7 p.m. tomorrow. Um, basically, think of it as like a uh, kind of startup uh, informal career fair. We're, we're doing it so for people who are visiting their families from out of town and say, oh yeah, maybe I, maybe I should consider Ann Arbor to relocate from the coasts. Um, but you're all invited out to it. It'll be great food and all that good stuff. 4 to 7 p.m. at Fred's, formerly known as, what was that place? Uh, uh, Bobo's, yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, this one is my uh, shameless plug. So um, I recently, myself, I joined with uh, three other people, one of them right there, David, from the University of Michigan to take a research project at Michigan called Census, C-E-N-S-Y-S, that um, is internet-wide scanning. So we scan the whole internet every day looking for any devices that will respond to a request for hello. Um, this has uh, a big application in cybersecurity and basically like getting a sense of what is an attacker's view of a company's network. Um, we're turning it into a business. We completed tech transfer last month, and uh, we currently have um, five full-time people in the company, and we are hiring a, a senior DevOps role. Um, so if things like running a 36-node elastic search cluster or uh, helping our data processing pipeline, which is currently ba basically migrating to the Google data cloud stack, um, Dataflow, Bigtable, et cetera, and moving our front end off of App Engine, um, if these kind of things are interesting to you and you've worked in a, a DevOps role previously, uh, this is a full-time uh, salary paid role with equity. Uh, find me uh, or check out census.io or email me there. Uh, we will be back here in a month. We have all five spots spoken for. Real Lingua, Safe Niche Science, Metacrew, Vora, and Write About. Uh, if you want to pitch in January or February, email organizers at a Tech and hope to see you at Pizza House. Good night, everybody.